Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for our machine learning class. Um, and uh, this video um, hopefully shouldn't be too long. I'm just going to show you the steps in order to get, uh, if, if you're on a Windows operating system, um, then this video is for you. Uh, so I'll give you some, I'll show you kind of walking through the steps to um, install the things that you need for this class, okay? So, uh, yeah, I'm, and I might be reusing this video um, for any of my classes that I use, like Python and Jupyter Notebooks um, <clears throat> for various things. So you might be in my machine learning class or some other class, like um, deep learning in neural networks or something like that. So um, we're just going to go, I'm just going to show you doing these steps on a Windows system, um, okay? So these are the same steps that you should see um, if you go to the README. So um, if you pull up um, the repository for our class that you should have a link to, um, and you go down here to the README. Um, so we basically need to have three things installed uh, for... Uh, in order to run the Jupyter Lab um, and the Jupyter Hub server. So uh, first of all, you do need to get uh, the, the Git client installed, okay? <coughs> so, you should start by downloading this. So I've got a link here. You'll want to get it from the official uh, SCM site, right? Um, I've already downloaded it, so I won't download it. Um, but um, I'll go ahead and start running it here. Um, so uh, all, all three of the things that you have to install here. So you have to install Git, you have to install VirtualBox, and you have to install uh, Vagrant. Uh, they all use uh, standard uh, Windows installers. And I think all of them, we, we basically just need to accept the defaults. So uh, they'll take some time to get installed here, but, um, they sh but, but they should be relatively straightforward installations, okay? So if you download that for the for the Git client, um, I mean you know you, you can download it and 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 you know select to have it run after it's downloaded. Or me, I usually like to download it and have it saved to my download folder so that uh, if I need to, I can rerun it, <clears throat> find it, and rerun it. So So you want to go ahead and, and allow it to make changes to your device. So like I said, this is just a regular executable. Um, so you probably go ahead and, and allow it to install in the default location. So by default, it's going to install the tools and program files Git. Um, and I already I, I've I installed this once before, so my folder there. You shouldn't get a, any warning messages when you do this. So uh, you just leave the co components selected that they had selected. Um, if you have another editor, you might want to select a different editor. Um, um, so, like, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and use Atom, um, just in case I need to. Although, you probably won't need to use the editor here from Git. Um, you can go ahead and, and use that. We do want to be able to use Git from the command line, or at least you want to, if, if you want to be able to follow along. Um, with me here, so so yeah, do make certain that that uh, second one is selected, um, and then I think all the rest of these you just want to leave as the default, okay? And there we go. So um, I think this one will be a relatively quick install, so I might go ahead and let's see how long this is going to take here. So Git, if you don't know, it's it's a um, it's a, what's known as a source code um, revision control system. So its main purpose is really for working with groups of developers on a project. Um, so uh, for people developing software, but you can really use it um, as a revision control system for any kinds of uh, files. So it doesn't necessarily have to be program code. It could be you know documents or or um, spreadsheets or you know other kinds of information. Um, so it, its main purpose is really, you know, to have multiple people working on a project that might have multiple files, um, and it keeps track of all the re revisions and things. So really, if you don't know Git or haven't used it, it's a tool you really should know, especially as like a graduate student uh, with a computer science degree or technical degree. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, it should install correctly. So um, I normally, like I say here, it's a good idea to test this. So uh, another thing, so if if you're not familiar with using the command line, uh, the, or also known as the DOS command prompt in Windows, 
Um, you can bring up your, you know, the, the start menu and just type a uh, command, C-O-M-M-A-N-D, and you should see it there, or, or type um, prompt or something like that. So I normally like to right-click on that and pin it to my start menu so I have it here since I open up terminals relatively often, okay? So the thing is, it, it should put git onto your path for you. So on Windows, if you do, like, where git after you've installed it, um, you should find that it finds it. So if you get a message like, um, uh, like if I look for something that's not there, if you get something that can't find it, that means that either you don't have it installed or for some reason it didn't get put onto your path correctly, okay? So the way Windows finds programs from the command line is there's an, what's known as an environment variable, which you can think of as like a variable uh, in a regular programming language, but basically the directory location where the git executable is needs to be on your path. And so you need to be able to run this um, so and, and I mean you should be able to find it with where and, and uh, later on in this video I'll, sh I'll show you actually running it uh, but we ought to be able to do things like uh, for example find the version number so as of the making of this video it's version 2.27 okay so that was the git tool that one should be relatively quick and easy to install uh, these next two are a little bit bigger, so they'll take a little bit of time to download it. Like I said, I've already downloaded these. Um, so the next thing you'll want to install is VirtualBox. So um, we're, I've, I've actually got it set up so that we can run the Jupyter Lab and the Jupyter Hub server inside of a VirtualBox. So it's actually running on Ubuntu, um, an Ubuntu distribution with a bunch of tools and, and all the Python libraries and things installed for you that you need. Um, so anyway, if you go to this download, um, and you'll just want to, you know, if you're on Windows 10, you'll want to do the Windows host. If you're on um, Mac OS, you'll want to do the OS X. Uh, again, as of the, the making of this video, it's version 6.1.12. Um, I think down here I had it, it was 6.1.10 when I made the README, so it's already updated a little bit. So you want to make certain you have at least 6.1.12 or greater when you download this, okay? So again, when you download that, um, it's a regular Windows installer. So this one, um, and, and you know, it's it's, it's 100 megabytes. Um, so you know, a little bit bigger. Um, might take a little bit of time to download, depending on your download speed. So let's walk through. Like, like again, like I said, I don't think you have to to change any of the defaults. So you want to leave those selected. Um, I mean, you know, you can go ahead and allow it to create start menu entries and all those things. And you definitely want it to, you know, uh, add these things to your network interfaces so you can do things with VirtualBox. Um, and yeah, that's it. There's not a whole lot of um, things it asks you for here, so, but that's all I need to do for the select the defaults, and then you want to go ahead and allow it to make the changes, so. Um, So I can't remember how long this one takes, so I might, um, so I might pause the video and come back here if it looks like it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, oh, okay, so it's relatively quick. It's not as, not as long as I thought it would be. <coughs> so I, I don't want to start it up yet. So. Uh, another thing is that we really need to reboot our computer after doing this. Actually, I don't. I don't know if VirtualBox really needs to have the computer rebooted, but um, um, and um, oh, and and as I say um, here, uh, again, it's good to check. Uh, although in this case, VirtualBox isn't really meant to be run from the command line, so by default, it doesn't add uh, the command line tools to your um, oops, to your um, your path environment variable. Um, so if you select the default, it should put the, uh, uh, the, the the VBox manage command line tool into program files VirtualBox bin, I think. Although, um, here, let, let me check. So another thing, let, let me check where it actually installed that. I should have made a note when we were running the installer if it gave me an option. So let's look and see if we've got it there. So it was in C colon uh, program files um, I, I think it actually moved, so I need to update my README. So hopefully by the time you see this README, I've corrected that. So, uh, so I noticed that between 1.10 and 1.12, it actually moved to um, Program Files Oracle 
uh, virtual box okay so that's where the the uh, command is um, the, the, the vbox manage that I want to run here so um, there it is so um, I often kind of as a shortcut I like to copy the address as text that, that allows me to do a, um, a control V so um, oh here though although there's a space in here so I'm just gonna try and run the VBox manage just to make certain that it runs to, to get the version there so since there's a space in here I need to put quotes around here so that was the command or you could have copied and pasted the command that I had um, in the readme file so that should run if it installed correctly and uh, and yeah like I said on this video uh, you should have something like a 6.1.12 or, or higher um, basically at this point so so hopefully that that works and that runs um, and then the third thing that we need is vagrant um, so vagrant is another virtualization tool uh, and it actually uses VirtualBox so you, you can read about you can go and read about it if, if, if you need if you want to become more familiar with what it is. Um, so if you go to the Vagrant site, um, I'm not certain, be careful, I'm not certain if it correctly auto-detects your operating system or not. So, but anyway, if you go to my link and download it, um, so this is the biggest one of all. Um, so it's over 200, about 250 megabytes, okay. Um, and I think this one does take a little bit of time to install here, so let's let's go through it. Um, so again, you should probably select all the defaults. So you want to go ahead and accept the license agreement. Um, let it go ahead and install where it wants to. Um, oh, it doesn't really ask you very much stuff. So so the <laughs> there, there's no real defaults except for the um, location where you want to install it here. Um, go ahead and allow it to, you know, uh, in install the files and things that it needs. So, um, <clears throat> so actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and I won't stop my video here. So I'll, I'll go ahead here while that's installing um, and talk a little bit about this. So after this, um, Vagrant um, definitely needs a reboot to make certain everything gets installed correctly. So what I suggest you do, so, so after it does this, um, you should go ahead and reboot your system um, like it asked for, uh, which I'll go ahead and do. Uh, while it's rebooting, I suggest that you enter into your BIOS um, and make certain that you've got uh, virtual, hardware virtualization enabled. Okay, So how you get into your BIOS could differ depending on uh, the make of your computer. It's usually F2, uh, sometimes F12, or sometimes the delete key. So if you press that, go to your, into your BIOS, and then you have to find it. So, so I've got, uh, you know, you might want to look at this link here. So it should probably, usually it'll be under like your processor or CPU settings. So you want to go in there, uh, and, and it'll be called, if you have an Intel CPU, it's usually like VT-X, I believe, or something like that. Um, and if you have a, a AMD CPU, it's usually like AMD-V for AMD virtualization. It's a virtual something, so... So anyway, make certain that, that that's enabled, um, and then save those changes, and then allow your computer to boot up, okay? Um, and then the other thing for Windows users, um, I suggest that you make certain that this Hyper-V is disabled. So, uh, I can't remember exactly, so, but if you go to um, the link that I gave you here, and um, you open up, the uh, programs and feature of oh, the control panel so I usually just open this open up the start menu and type in control to get my control panel um, and then we look at uh, programs and features um, so I think it's under programs there it is so it's actually programs and then programs and features on Windows 10 um, and then here like it says uh, select turn select the turn windows features on and off so that's over here on the side select that there uh, and then in here is where you want to find this hyper-v hypervisor so it should be under um, uh, hyper-v down here 
right? So it's okay if that's select, but um, but under the Hyper-V platform, uh, just make certain that that's unselected, the Hyper-V hypervisor, okay? So I'm not certain if that's on by default or not. Um, I thought it was off by default, but uh, this is a relatively fresh install of Windows. So, so, so again, that's another good thing to check. You might get some errors if that's on. So I'll go ahead and um, disable that as well here. Um, all right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop my video because after this, I'm going to go ahead and do my reboot, um, and then when we come back, we'll finish up now. So, um, oh yeah, when you change that, you're supposed to restart as well. So, but yeah, I don't want to restart yet. I want to allow that to finish, okay? So, let me go ahead and pause, and then when we come back, we'll finish up. Okay, we're back. Uh, we successfully finished um, uh, installing Vagrant, uh, and I rebooted my computer, and as I suggested to you, you know, I checked my BIOS, made certain that hardware virtualization was turned on, um, and, you know, before we left, I also showed you turning off the this Hyper-V um, feature here. So, um, like I say here, you know, maybe we should go ahead and test that Vagrant is also, um, so, so Vagrant is meant to be used from the command line. So um, it should have added it, uh, the, the Vagrant tools to your path. Um, so if we ask on, on Windows system where Vagrant is, it should find it in that directory, <clears throat> the location where it told you it was going to install the things, right? Actually, the bin directory. And uh, we should be able to find out that our version is uh, 2.2. Uh, point nine here, which again, as I'm making this video, you should have at least that version or maybe a higher version, depending on when you watch this compared to when I made the video. Um, all right, so actually, I think I can keep that up because our next step then we're going to be doing some stuff from the command line. Um, so the first thing um, now that you've got all the tools installed, um, well, uh, about here uh, is we want to clone the class repository. I recommend doing this. Um, so um, I already have a repos directory here. Let me see. Um, so when you work on a Windows system, your home directory is usually under C colon users uh, and a subdirectory depending on the username that you chose. So I, I you have a username a dash d a s h, um, and I usually create a directory called repos under my home directory where I put repositories like this class repository that we're going to do here. Um, yeah, I've already got stuff in here. In fact, I've already got a copy of this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. Um, empty my recycle bin here. So um, I usually, yeah, like I said, I mean, I usually, create, if I didn't have a repos here, I, I could you could right click on here. Um, and um, you know, do do like a new folder. Okay, um, you can you can do it from a command line prompt. So if you're a command line, I can do a make directory repos. Right, um, it won't I won't do it here. But uh, but again, either way, if you don't have it, but then the next step, make certain that you're inside of that repos directory. So you want to ch um, change directory in, into repos. All right, and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to clone the um, class repository, right? So you can just copy and paste this command here. So clone basically is, is downloading the files, okay? So it's going to download all of the lecture notebooks and the assignments and other stuff uh, for you from the class repository. Uh, I think pasted just control V nowadays in the, yeah, in the, um, uh, in, in the Windows uh, command prompt uh, tool here. So again, this might take a little bit of time here, so I might pause again here. Let me, let me check here. So, um, but uh, like I said, it, you know, Git is more powerful than just something to like download files. And while I'm using, uh, while you're taking this course from me, um, I might like add new assignments or, or add new things or fix bugs or stuff. So if I ever tell you to do a, uh, a pull, because I push new stuff to the repository, you need to pull down some new changes, uh, what you want to do is you want to change 
to the repos directory, and then um, the result of doing this clone is there's going to be a new subdirectory called ML Python class with no .git at the end there. Um, so it's already created the directory, but it hasn't finished uh, pulling down the files yet here. So at this point, there's nothing in there. But as soon as this is done, you'll see that there's a bunch of files in this directory. So if I, if I ever tell you that you need to pull down some changes or bug fixes or a new assignment or something, change into that directory and do a, a git pull, okay? Um, okay, so let me go ahead and pause and let that finish up. Um, so again, I'm, I'm kind of on a rural uh, uh, Texas uh, broadband connection here, so I don't have a lot of bandwidth, so, so it takes quite a bit of time to download this. Hopefully you've got a better connection. Or if you do this on campus, for example, it'll usually be, you know, pretty quick. So, um, okay, let's pause and come back after this is done. Okay, um, we're back um, and we've finished um, cloning our class repository here. So um, now we're Basically, uh, so uh, before I kind of show, the, I mean, the next step is the the, the big important step. But uh, but uh, I mean, do check, you know, that, that when you do that, for example, that like I said, you should have um, a subdirectory called ML Python class. Or again, if you're watching this video for a different class, uh, this this will all be the same except for maybe the name of the repository is is slightly different, right? But uh, after you're done with that, you should find that there's a bunch of files in there. So these all got downloaded uh, for this cloning operation. So uh, including kind of most importantly, you know, there's a bunch of um, uh, lecture notebooks down here in the uh, lectures um, subdirectory. Uh, you'll probably find there's some assignments. I may or may not have posted all the assignments yet, but there's some assignments and the assignments and so on, okay? But yeah, you'll want to check that, you know, make certain that you got the directory... Uh, you can check in your file browser, or you can check on the command line, right? Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, so, you know, this readme is actually the same readme that you should be finding here now. So once you've cloned this repository, you've basically got this readme, and you've basically got all the source files that are in the repository here. So, so, um, so for the next step, we need you need to run this from the command line. Um, so you need to change into that directory where, wherever you clone this directory. Change into the directory called ML Python class or whatever the the name is of the class again from your uh, command line tool. Um, and now in here you, you should find that there's a file called Vagrant file. Okay, so this actually has all of the um, information for. Um, so what we're doing in this step is we're actually going to. Um, download a, a full virtual machine uh, that has Ubuntu installed um, and then we're going to do what's known as provisioning so, so after it, it's after it downloads and, and gets this virtual machine running uh, I'm going to do some additional things to uh, install Anaconda Python um, and make certain that all the Python libraries we need are installed uh, install and set up a Jupyter Lab uh, and a Jupyter Hub server um, and other steps like that. Okay, this all happens with the Vagrant Up step. Okay, and this is going to take a long time as well here. So let me go and start it. But I'm definitely going to pause here again. Um, so when you do this, like I said, uh, for me, it, it usually takes maybe half an hour to an hour to, to first get the um, virtual machine downloaded, okay? And then after that, it'll take another hour, half an hour to an hour or so to uh, actually install Anaconda, the, the, the Python distribution, and get everything set up, okay? So, so it can take a while um, to do this here. Um, and you'll see a lot of messages uh, flow past, but, but keep that terminal up. Um, the very last thing you should see at the end is a message from my install scripts. So if everything kind of works correctly, you should see that Anaconda Python 3 was installed successfully and the Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab server is running. Okay? And if, in, if instead you see um, some error messages or things, I encourage you to kind of maybe just you know copy and paste any 
error message you see here and, and send them to me and get some help from an instructor or something. So, in my testing though, uh, even though it takes some time, um, it's been going pretty smoothly. So it it it, it um, 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 it's pretty, seems to be pretty reliable to download this stuff um, and install everything correctly and get everything set up. So. Um, and then at this point we're, we're pretty much done. So, but I am going to show you a few more things after the, this finishes up here um, on, on how to. This will actually not only uh, provision it, so download it, uh, install stuff. It'll actually start the virtual machine running for the first time as well. So, so if everything works correctly, you'll have your virtual machine running, uh, and you can actually get into your uh, Jupyter Hub server and start working on the class materials. So. Um, Okay, so let me go ahead and pause, then and I'll come back after this hopefully uh, all completes um, and, and everything is done and running. Okay, hi. Um, at this point, uh, you should have, the, uh, the, the vagrant up should have been done. Uh, and so it probably took its time. Um, I think, as I mentioned uh, before, in my testing, normally, I mean, it takes some time, but it's been pretty re reliable. So hopefully that'll be the case for you. So you might even see, um, I switched to a different terminal. Sorry about that. Um, but um, uh, you should see a similar thing at the end when you do your first vagrant up. So this last um, output message here is coming from the installation scripts that I give you. So you should see that Python 3 was installed and that Jupyter, Hab, Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab <clears throat> is running, okay? So um, kind of to finish up here, um, the, the very first thing that I like to do is actually to, to shut it back down and, and start it back up again. Um, so I'll go into some more detail in this in the next video where I talk more about using Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks, okay? So as an introduction. But um, um, again, from the command line, um, if you just do vagrant uh, and don't give it any other uh, command to do, you'll get a list of all the commands that you want to do. So we just perform the vagrant up, which starts in the very in the very first time it starts it up. Uh, it runs this provisioning, which is really just installing um, the the software and things like Python and things that we need. So you'd think there would be a, a vagrant down to shut it down, but it's actually vagrant halt. So, so I usually just do a vagrant halt um, as my first thing <coughs> because, um, sorry, vagrant halt. All right, I, I mistyped it before. Um, so you should see that it that it says that it's forcing a shutdown. It doesn't take very long to do this. Um, um, although, yeah, so if you're wondering, I mean, we're actually running a virtual machine now uh, behind the scenes using VirtualBox. So, so it actually shut it down. Um, and then you can do bigger up again. So, like I said, it'll this will bring the um, virtual machine back up. It won't have to reprovision because it, it already installed everything. But I like to do this uh, because I want to point out a few things here. Um, so, I mean, this time, you know, it won't take as long, maybe less than a minute or so should. Uh, but particularly look out for this. So, first of all, make certain that you see that the um, port 8000 is being forwarded from the guest machine, that's the virtual machine, to your host. So that's how we're going to access uh, Jupyter Lab, actually, is through a browser uh, interface to port 8000, okay? <coughs> um... Yeah, and, and it should be forwarding port 22 um, here. This actually allows you to secure shell into uh, the um, virtual machine, which I'll show you. Um, actually, probably in the next video, I'll show it to you. Um, and you should see, I mean, you might get some some warnings or, or, or so, but you should see that the guest additions are running. Hopefully, you'll see that and not get a, an issue. Uh, and then finally, you know, you want to make certain that the um, uh, your directory is mounted. So here, again, if you're on a Windows machine, you'll probably see like C colon, uh, users, your username, repos, and then the name of the repository. 
uh, and it should be being so. So basically, what happens is this directory on your machine gets mounted into the guest and in, into the virtual machine's directory um, as a directory name slash vagrant. Okay. So, uh, but but that, that's the normal thing you should see. So it should should be up and running, right? Uh, and then uh, quickly. Um, so at this point, you know, we, we've done all these first um, five steps. So now we want to actually access JupyterLab, okay? So in the README, I, I talked about it. So you need to know the, the default username and password. Uh, you need to know, so you bring up, bring up a browser on the same machine where you have your virtual machine running and go to localhost colon port 8000. So that's localhost and then a colon and then 8000, right? Um, so the full thing is HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8000. But if you just type in that, um, that should be enough for most, um, you know, um, uh, browsers like Firefox or Chrome or whatever you're using. Now, the, the default username is Vagrant and the default password is Vagrant. So um, I already started this up before, but so I, I normally, um, I use password managers for my more important passwords, um, but um, uh, I usually allow the browser password manager to remember unimportant things like this, so, so like my username and password here, but it's it's vagrant, vagrant should be all you need to, to be able to get into the uh, to Jupyter Hub and to, to run your own Jupyter Lab uh, instance here. Um, and then that should spawn what's known as a kernel um, and you should get the Jupyter Lab um, interface here for you. And in particular uh, again, if everything was installed correctly, you should find that on the file browser here um, <clears throat> that there's a directory called ML Python class, and this these files, even though they're being served from your virtual machine, are the the files here on your host directory. So, um, so, so basically, these same files, right? So. Uh, oh, and by the way, it it downloads. Th this is actually the Anaconda um, installer here. Um, I should probably fix my, um, my my installation script. You don't really need to have that uh, anymore once you've got Anaconda installed. So, so you could actually get rid of that. But um, okay, so that's basically it. So hopefully you were able to do that and you're able to 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 get into your Jupyter Lab at the end of this video here. All right. So um, that's it for this video, um, and um, um, in the next video after that, I'm going to after this, I'm going to go into using Jupyter, the basics of some of the parts of using Jupyter Lab and using uh, Jupyter Notebooks. All right, um, but uh, that's it for this video, and then I will see you guys in the next video. <clears throat>